Cecil! Oh, it's nice to see you. You're back from the colonies, aren't you? I went down to see where we conquered the Zulu some time ago. No, oh, oh, no, Reginald, you said you were going to the colonies over in the west, you know, uh, the Canadas. Uh, <laughs> looks like I took a wrong turn, my friend. I am severely fucked up. Oh, Cecil, did you, oh, did you enjoy the cannabis over there? It's it's actually been a year now uh, since they've legalized it, as they say. Oh, I have been celebrating, my friend. <laughs> oh, it is a joyous occasion, is it not? Oh, my. Uh, this, by the way, this beer is delightful. Oh, they, it's Canadian... They... Moosehead! Oh, they, they do make it proper over there, don't they? Uh, unlike their American cousins. Ugh. Ugh. So, Gag uh, me with uh, a uh, joint. Cecil, I, I, I hate to interrupt you, but there, there appears to be some sort of insect. Is that a tick upon your spleef? Oh, this old thing. Oh, it's fine. No! Oh, Cecil, no! You've been attacked by that treacherous, toxic tick. Shall I shall I get you a cup of tea to help? I can dial 999. Oh, 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 oh tea, actually. This. That would be delightful. Oh, okay, excellent. Uh, Mr. Tick, sir, would you like some tea as well? It would be an impolite uh, of me not to offer. Excellent. I will get that for you, Mr. Tick. Uh, as you were, gentlemen. You know when I pick up a beat That's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of What Were They Thinking? I'm Brendan. And I'm Nathan. I wanted to set the record for getting through that the quickest ever. Nice. Thanks. I think we did pretty good. Yeah, we did really well. And now I'm just going to, uh, you know, filibuster. I will I will hang up. I mean, <laughs> it's within my power. You mean you will walk out because we were recording in person? Well, no, I would, yes, I would walk out of my room in one city separate from the one you're in. Damn it, Nathan, pulling back that curtain. Breaking the fourth wall, breaking the fourth wall. Break the fourth wall down! Oh, boom, wrestling reference secured. Oh, so early. Mm. That's two records tonight then, eh? Yeah. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Lighting it on fire there, eh, bud? Hey, bud. A real taking a snipey there, bud. Yeah, there. Got your moose head and your <laughs> and your your joint there. No, oh, I'm actually I, I, I'm being super fancy and whatnot here, bud. I got a Jackson Triggs wine. Oh, that is fancy. Yeah, and and because it's actually it has been a year, but something new happened this year. I had a gummy. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> So this podcast could get really interesting in a, in a few minutes here, but it's always uh, interesting, <laughs> even more interesting, okay. I should say. But Nathan, we are not alone this week, and we haven't even gotten to the movie that we're discussing yet. No. But I mean, you all know you clicked on the episode. You have foresight, right? Uh, yes, or you know, g- good eyesight. Eyesight, yeah. <laughs> not even foresight. Right, <laughs> just twenty twenty sight. Yeah, or yeah. I mean, you know. Or corrective lenses. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever gets you through the day. Or, you know, a machine that will, you know, a, a program that will read the text out to you as well. <laughs> like a text to voice. Yes. Yeah. But we with us, joining us... Possibly um, you I... have a seeing eye dog that can read <laughs> in some way, let you know what you're wa- listening to as well. That's possible. It is possible. I you don't, don't, you don't want me to bring on our guests, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we have guests. We do have guests, Nathan, because as you said, uh, misery loves company, or sometimes you just want to have a party. Yeah, well, you know, it's a six of one and half a dozen the other with me. Joining us for the first time, first time ever yeah. on this podcast, <laughs> uh, from the Everything I Learned From Movies <laughs> podcast, we have Steve and Izzy. Welcome once again. 
Where am yeah. I? I've never been here before. <laughs> what is what is this place? What is this Canada. Str- what is this strange and unusual sensation I'm feeling? I don't know if I agree with this green <laughs> fog in the air. Izzy, just be careful when you're walking. Oh no, you just oh you just broke that. Don't worry about it. Just be careful when you don't oh, god! <laughs> oh no, watch I out break, for that moose jaw. I break what I want. <laughs> ah, Steve! Put her in the oh, corner! You, you guys are you guys are way out in Moose Jaw? Oh <laughs> uh, no, we're from Maine, don't you know? Oh, he didn't, don't go he, down that road. It's, it's a lot of we just watched Pet road. Cemetery One and True. Oh. Yeah. Did, did you watch the remake as well? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we watched that about a month ago. Sweet. Oh Lord in heaven! Wait, what? It's a New England <laughs> accent, not a Southern Baptist accent. <laughs> Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> there you go. You spot back back on there, old kid. Pepperidge <laughs> Farm. Okay. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm, remember. So, ticks. Yeah, so we're talking about a movie this week. Uh, this is, of course, uh, another edition of Small Screen Shamefuls. Yes. Our second one. And it is Halloween. And Halloween. Yeah. But not the movie Halloween, because that movie's dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we're talking about ticks. 1993. Uh, starring, I mean, Seth Green, Mm -hmm. Alfonso Ribeiro, who may, many of you know as Carlton from The Fresh Prince. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and correct that. All of you know as Carlton from The Fresh Prince. Or or the the host of Royal Flush. Or the host of America's Funniest Home Videos. So as I said, all of you know him from, as Carlton from The Fresh Prince. (laughs) I exclusively know him from Catch-21. How dare you? America's Funniest Home Videos. guest spots on Silver Spoons. (laughs) Michael so Carlton from The Fresh Prince is in this movie, guys. He has, he has a very extensive career, sir. So, sure. Okay. <laughs> but Tex, and, straight to video. And, and Peter Scolari. Yes, the more successful of the bosom buddies. <laughs> so, and Clint Howard, the most successful Howard. Wait, hold on. I'm getting, getting an email. Steve, he is not the most successful Howard because also in this movie is Rance Howard. Oh, that's right. Yeah, He's the sheriff. The unsung Howard. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so just I just thought it'd be interesting to see what Tom Hanks was doing at the same time as Peter Scolari. <laughs> so in 1993, <laughs> he was busy winning an Oscar for Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just and thought that Peter was great. Scolari Perhaps was Perhaps in... filming Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh. Direct-to-video Drek with Seth Green and Carlton. <laughs> yep. So, Tix. Nathan, tell us a little bit about Tix. Well, Tix is a science fiction feature of ill regard for facts or science. <laughs> um, it starts out, uh, the uh, group of inner city youths are going to like an outward bound type weekend getaway to commune with nature and set themselves straight behaviorally. Uh, they are then, of course, beset upon by weed ranchers and gigantic ticks. Mm-hmm. And everything else is pretty much all tropey, straightforward stuff. Yep. Again, starring Clint Howard. <laughs> and Peter Scolari. But don't take our word for it. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Steve really doesn't right. want to be on this episode. Wait, am I, am I going too fast? <laughs> well, let's start. Let's let's start. Let's dive in, Nathan. Okay, let's. We open with a uh, title card. Well, not title card, but a uh, production card for Overseas Film Group, because everything about this movie was probably illegal in North America at the time. <laughs> Well, there was also Olive Films, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a couple. Oh, you know who else is in this? I think it's Mickey Dolenz's daughter. Mm. Yeah, Amy. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Fun fact. I mean, interesting, interesting tidbit. tidbit. Cause it's tidbit that's interesting and interesting tidbit. Goddamn right. <laughs> Got anything to say about that, Americans? Hmm. It'd be better if it was a fun fact. Hmm. A super fun fact, because it would be a fun, fun fact. I don't know about that. Oh, you're going to make me ask for you to sing the song! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said it. <laughs> so, we open with uh, a shot of what is a, a grow-op uh, that is apparently somehow producing toxic sludge. I don't know how that would work in a grow-op. I thought it was just a giant Rube Goldberg device. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, is that whole thing powered by that hamster in a wheel? Or <laughs> yep. Well, it is. His name is Clint Howard. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, did you did you notice who directed? No, no. I don't think Tony Randall. Yeah, I don't think it's the same one. It's not. No. <laughs> it is one thousand percent not him. <laughs> no, it is one thousand percent him. It is exactly the Tony Randall you're thinking. Actually, of. gentlemen, that was my Alan Smithy, if you will, because I didn't want to be associated with this movie, but god damn it, I need the money. <laughs> Wait a second, Tony Randall, why did you just slightly change the spelling of your last name? <laughs> Hiding in plain sight. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have Gremlins 3 to shoot. Hang on. Jetpack. <laughs> so, we smash cut from there to uh, Seth Green apparently being abandoned under a bridge by his father. Mm. Because he's dropping him off for the aforementioned yeah. Outward Bound camp, and <laughs> nobody's there. And he's just like, no. eh, they'll get here. <laughs> get out. <laughs> yeah, I, I was totally under the impression, like, well, you're 18 now. You need this. <laughs> Best of luck. What? Can, right off the bat, I have to ask though. What was his haircut? Oof. I was trying to figure that, that out. It's like it was 90s like, preppy like, kid. Yeah, it was like yeah. part like it almost looked like a mix between like a mushroom cut and a mullet and a ponytail. <laughs> I believe it's called the Chandler. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that's correct. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, no, no. It's called the guy from Atlantis. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Jason Milo. 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 That's oh, it. yeah. It's, he's got the Milo cut. <laughs> oh, Atlantis: The Lost Empire. You know the Disney movie everybody remembers. I love that movie. Everybody's or the favorite. sequel, Atlantis Two: Milo's Journey, or wasn't BS like that? Was the was Atlantis? Was that Jim Verney's last credit? Uh, I don't know. What you mean, bro. I don't know. I think he died right around that time, which is, again, far too soon. Anyhow, Tex. Autoerotic asphyxiation. It'll take the best <laughs> of us. Oh, you shut your filthy whore mouth about Jim Verney, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you have hit a soft I'm just spot. Saying, I'm just saying. No, you can just if, stop if saying. You gotta go. No. That would be the best way to go. Ass I mean... holes. <laughs> Coming next week, Ernest Tober. Mm. I, I would love to be on every episode, because I think I have every Ernest movie. Wait a second, are you saying that he deserved to go out better than David Carradine? Yes. No. <laughs> Brothers in arms. <laughs> better than David Carradine, better than the guy from In Excess. Michael Hutchins. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have the uh, AEA Hall of Fame uh, poster here up on my wall. So who does, who does the creator of Robot Chicken meet uh, under this bridge after his dad just leaves him in the middle of the city under a bridge? The scariest gangster who ever gangstered in the history of gangsters. Right. Obviously. That kid from the Michael Jackson video. Carlton is a fucking thug. Oh my god. Wait, the kid from Silver Spoons? Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> I love his fir- one of his first lines. So he shows up and he wants to play some basketball. Obviously, we just got to hit every single stereotype as soon as possible. Oh, yes. And he goes, they call me Panic because I never do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse they me. They call me can- Have Babies <laughs> because I <laughs> Wait, wait, are you saying well, you're infertile? <laughs> Can we introduce an Academy Award for Best Character Introduction Ever? <laughs> that one's... You guys skipped over a very important part where Seth Green was having, like, weird flashbacks because he was all alone. Oh, yes, because we find out he's agoraphobic. Is that correct? I think he just doesn't like being alone in the woods. But he wasn't al- he, he was just alone. He, he, yeah. He's afraid just, of gore? It's whenever it's whenever he's alone because he talks about later how he has panic attacks at school when he's in the hallway. Mm. Well, because he got like he got lost in the woods when, for a while when he was really young. So he just if he feels like he's alone, that's when he has a panic attack. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got that sorted. So his we dad can move is, on. Is sending him out into the wilderness to fix this. Guys, right. the takeaway <laughs> from this whole thing is that Carlton is a thug. Right. Named yeah. Panic. Panic. Or Daryl. Uh, I like Daryl better. Actually, yes, I think Daryl's more gangster than Panic. <laughs> Panic doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me. <laughs> like, you're not named after something you don't do. 
And it was it was actually pretty egregious that they had him just dressed like MC Scat Cat. <laughs> <laughs> like we we oh. got we got to make him look like uh you know a, an extra in a Hammer video from the time. Oh, let's just do another comparison here real quick. Uh, 1993, uh, Will Smith was doing Six Degrees of Separation. <laughs> so, <laughs> you really got two of the, like, other <laughs> sitcom guys. We de- absolutely did. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wait, was Seth Green on any other terrible sitcom mm. with another ex- successful person? I don't think well, so. Well, he did have that show, Greg but, the Bunny, that only had like three episodes that, that I loved. That was later. Was he on Buffy yet? No. He, no. he was in an episode of X-Files. Oh, yeah. Gee. <laughs> he played the stoner kid. What was David Duchovny up to at this time? <laughs> oh, yeah, still doing X-Files. Uh, David Duchovny did the film California, thank you very much. Uh, he's also playing God. But anyways, Tex. Uh... We have other inner city youths now start to show. Oh wait, no, sorry. We you you were saying he was playing basketball where Carlton threatened to kill him uh, <laughs> if he didn't get a basket, and he proceeded mm-hmm. to get like five. Was anyone else really hoping that Carlton and Seth Green were going to get into a fight? They did. I thought you were going to say was anyone else really hoping that they were going to get together? <laughs> I feel well, there was an unspoken well, spoiler love alert. At the end I there. mean, <laughs> there was some sexual chemistry, guys. Oh yeah, they were they were eye fucking the shit out of each other. <laughs> so also, uh, I like that uh, Carlton here is taller than Seth Green. Mm. Possibly the shortest cast <laughs> with that actually involving actual little people. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, yeah so I think the tallest person in this movie is Clint Howard. Wait, yeah, you know who Seth Green could have played, right? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll, roll. I'm a dwarf. <laughs> For reference on that, check out our tiptoes episode at Everything I Learned from you Movies. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Dare you fucking plug your fucking podcast? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, someone did at, a horrible intro at the beginning. As, <laughs> so the rest of the uh, a diversity crew start showing up. Yep. And we've got, uh, what's the lady's Amy? Is that her name? I think so. Yeah. I just, I just said like, there's a Mexican dude who says he's not Mexican. Possibly Puerto Rican. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he says, do I look like a Mexican? And Seth Green was like, I guess. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yes. Who yes, is do. dating a rich <laughs> blonde bimbo. Yep. Uh, there is an Asian girl with PTSD. Mm-hmm. Speed it, Peter Scolari and playing his... Charles Danson. Yeah, Chuck Danson. <laughs> Charles Danson. That's hilarious. Uh, I don't know why. Well, he's Ted's less successful cousin. What was Ted Danson doing at this time? <laughs> oh, it looks like he was dating Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> oh, he was wearing blackface at a Friars Club uh, roast. I... Jesus. <laughs> I also thought at first when he said his name that he just said Charles Dance, and I'm like, why are you referencing him? <laughs> So he's he's uh, a bleeding heart do-gooder. His daughter is, of course, a disaffected teenager because she's mad about a divorce. And then finally, we get back to Amy, who's also another liberal, but she's not blonde, so I guess she fits a quota. Either way, it's going to be a cliche killing field. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Well, we got we got some good ones in there. Yeah. Hmm. They all look, by the way, like they're 35, except for Seth Green and the yeah. girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who still doesn't look 35. Right? He's in his late 50s and still doesn't look his 35. His late 50s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best at the age guessing game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this episode of Robot Chicken got to come together sometime. This is what the kids are talking about. Campus and shit. <laughs> oh, but yeah, eventually they all come together, Nathan. Yeah, and then they they take off for the woods, and then we go back to Clint Howard's grow off. Yeah. Uh, and his for some reason his his grow operation is producing some sort of toxic sludge. I think that it's like it's supposed to be something to make the weed better or something. Well, no, they kind of explain it away, saying that. Uh, he's using a steroid to help 
grow the plants and get better yields. Although, yeah. even if that's the case, I don't think it would produce a toxic sludge. No. Because you, oh, if he's going to be feeding it to the plants, he's going to be grinding it up and putting it in the soil. That's, it's, that's what gluten is. <laughs> So, also, Clint, Clint Howard talks back to the radio like Eddie Furlong talks to dogs in brain scan. Yes. <laughs> As if they understand everything he's saying. Well, and gentlemen, at this grow up, uh, Clint Howard seems really fixated with these bear traps that he's setting. Yeah, yes. why would you set bear traps in a place you would be exactly walking around? Exactly my question. Because you want to catch Right in the people. middle of the room. Who's going to step in that bear trap? Clint Howard. He was setting it up, and then it got distracted because he heard a shuffle and discovered his hamster was eaten. Setting it up for whom? For he, what? He was. I'm guessing for he was going to take it outside and go hide it, keep people out of them. Weed you set this shit outside. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> set this also, right. Izzy, you mentioned he looks at his mouse who has been killed. The way he looks at the hamster. mouse is a hamster. He, it, when he looks at it, though, it's like he has to look as close as possible to make sure that's what happened. Yeah. Oh, he picks cool. him up and is like, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got fucked up. That's right. Oh, Clint Howard's stoner talk is hilarious. It's the best. And so while all this is happening, the toxic sludge that I mentioned before is, is dripping onto egg sacs for ticks. And I don't understand why... These ticks come out super aggressive. If they were bottle-fed THC almost from the egg sac, wouldn't they be, like, super chill when they came out? <laughs> right? Just want some blood, brah! It's like, well, <laughs> or some Doritos, uh, dude. Uh, like, whatever and stuff. Having read the original uh, Philip K. Dick novel of Starship Troopers, that's exactly how those bugs start Holy out. Holy shit! It has kind of an adverse effect. For a and... second... I thought you were going to say this was based on a Philip K. Dick novel. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes! Philip K. Dick! No, no. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think Philip Dick wrote Starship Trooper, so feel free to cut that out. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I won't. <laughs> Maybe I will. You'll never know. So Starship Troopers. <laughs> so the next, uh, the, I guess the next big point here is that um, they, 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 they have to stop at a uh, like a roadside uh, to get I don't know use the bathroom get supplies and stuff like that and and uh, the the kid from the Michael Jackson video and Chris <laughs> from the Family Guy have a real bonding moment in the van. Oh, he asks him if he's ever killed someone. Yes, and he's like, uh, Carlton is like. I've killed as many people as ladies you boned, and Seth Green's all, that many, wow. That's actually one of the only real bright parts of this movie for me. I, I, first time I saw that, I was like, that's, that's a good one. He didn't miss a beat. Good delivery. Decent joke. <laughs> that, that kid may have a future in comedy. Right. I will say, though, that Alfonso, Carlton, whatever, his acting in this movie is insane. <laughs> Especially when we get to later. It actually just what? reminded me of Carlton trying to do like a like if they had an episode of The Fresh Prince where they had to put on like a skit for a middle school or something and Carlton had to be a street tough, that's what he would sound like. <laughs> oh, by the way, no nobody's mentioned it yet, but did you notice that uh he was wearing Will Smith's jacket the entire time? No. <laughs> It was like four sizes too oh. big for him. <laughs> yes, it was a rather large jacket on him. Oh boy! Did you notice in the uh, when they were in the store, there was a poster for the marijuana assassin yep. of youth. I wrote that down, and I also wrote, yeah, I wrote down that it was spelled wrong. Well, no, that's how they spelled it when that movie came out. Oh. Weird, because that's like a it's like one of those old uh, dope scare movies, like Reefer Madness. I I feel that we should probably do one next year in October. This is, we go back to the part where the where Clint Howard falls into a bear trap that he set up in the middle of the room for some reason, and it just looks like he's <laughs> being attacked by a slimy brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's true, aka a tick, <laughs> and then he becomes the tick, <gasps> Arthur. Spoon! <laughs> you know the worst part about him 
getting the 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 because the tick egg sack break open falls down on his face. He has ample time to get his hands up for the for the chair shot, and he doesn't. <laughs> Got to protect the head, bro. Right? You don't want that thousand yeah. dollar fine. No, you don't want to get all those all those former pot growers together to sue. Uh, I don't know, Mama Weed. Sure. <laughs> I don't know who's in control. John Gotti. <laughs> Mary Wada. <laughs> Thank you. Right? <laughs> she goes by many a name, Steve. Mary Jane, the green haired temptress. Mm hmm. Mm. Reefer Madness. Yep. Uh, Court Courtney Love. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. Maui Wowie. <laughs> Wowie Zowie. Cheech and Chong. Purple people leader or something. So anyway. <laughs> Cush McCushington. <laughs> so Carlton doesn't trust the the camp. No. Like just in general, like the area. He doesn't trust it. He has a great reaction when the not Mexican guy says, This reminds me of Juvie Hall, and he's like, What? <laughs> Did you notice that weird reaction? I I yeah. thought that was supposed to be like his sarcastic, you've been in juvie? No. What? No. I don't know. They, they, this is where we get a shot of one of the first tick eggs in the camp. And mm -hmm. as for all this movie's flaws, I really, really loved the dedication to the practical effects. Oh, yeah. They're great. Yeah, it's got some good practical. Um, I think it being in 1993 definitely helped. Obviously. <laughs> That's not to say that they didn't use some, because they do, but the, the practical is really good. Guys, uh, just for a comparison point, the the same year uh, Jurassic Park came out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, comparatively. <laughs> oh, and this is also the point. So we're at the camp, right? Yes. And... And um, uh, Peter Scolari is doing this, like, all of a sudden there's a voiceover. Yeah, and I'm he's like, doing, like, a Captain Kirk log. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, at first I was like, what the fuck is happening? Star date, 7-13, 1993. Panic is one of our craziest new people. <laughs> he just throws an axe at the sign and knocks it over and tries to, like, put it back up. I'm like, what? what is happening? It was interesting. I found him at the disco. <laughs> Tom, please call me. I'll do anything. I'll just play a cameo. You know, what he, you know what he liked my Panic at the Disco reference. Huh? I heard you. I gotcha. <laughs> Peter Scolari was considered for the role of Wilson in Castaway. You're trying to help and I get it, Steve. Thank you. Nathan, it's, Nathan, it's okay. <laughs> It's, it's I thought gonna be fine. Really long and hard on that Panic at the Disco joke. Did you? Nobody. Did you? Were you working on that all night? Like all night. All night. No sleep. <sighs> None. Okay. Well, listen. You're joking over really well. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna move on to the next joke now. Okay. okay. All right. Is that the part where they make the legitimate South Park joke right in the middle of the movie? <laughs> What's that? The. The, the tick is on the back of Peter Scolari's daughter. Oh, so and what does Seth it? Green go for like a nature walk? What's the South Park joke? Oh, uh, well, I suppose technically it's a ticks joke because in uh, <laughs> South Park, you hacks yeah. <laughs> in one of the, the the Costa Rica episode with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, they do yeah. a joke where a giant bug is on her back and attacking her. Oh. His name is, you got something on your back. Oh, <laughs> is, that, is that the episode with the rainforest? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So ticks. Um. <laughs> Getting gay with kids is here. Spread the joy and spread the cheer. So. That girl's acting, by the way, when he's trying to get the tick off her, is horrendous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ow, ow, it hurts, it hurts, ow, it ow, ow. It made me uncomfortable and, like, secondhand embarrassment. That's how bad it was. <laughs> oh, good times. So, um, back at the camp, they're sitting around... It looks like they're going to have a campfire, which hasn't started yet. But 
though some randos just show up at the camp and who are they they're well okay so one of them is a hick like a stereotypical hick yep but the other one looks like if like the other one kind of reminded me of biff from back to the future but a little more austere because yeah it was so weird i'm like is he his handler yeah well he makes him call him sir well and funny enough he is credited in the movie as sir yes that's his name. Because that's what it, he makes everybody call him. <laughs> yep. And uh, they're there just to give a, a, a cautious warning that there are, you know, marijuana farmers in the area. And uh, they, uh, they, they they might be up to some chicanery. Mm. Watch out for them marijuana farmers. Right. Gotta be careful around here, boss. There's gorilla in them woods. <laughs> I gotta tell you guys, the main trait of a marijuana farmer is senseless violence. Oh. Obviously. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Come on. Marijuana makes people super angry and aggressive. <laughs> and bugs. Yeah, weed actually just makes you really angry. Because <laughs> they keep setting bear traps in the middle of their living rooms. <laughs> He's not even doing any weed at all in the movie. No. So never get high on your own supply. But unfortunately, <laughs> that means he doesn't get a high. So he's never mellow. He's really uptight. <laughs> are you talking? Which guy are you talking about, sir? Oh yeah, it, yeah. it's like a passive aggressive waspy uptight. But I mean, it's still. so it's such a weird choice to make one of the Hicks just like that character. Yeah, <laughs> like I was like, wait, what? <laughs> But, but these randos who show up at the teen camp aren't off-putting in any way except for the fact that they say that, you know, you could get killed by weed farmers around here, so, you know, be careful. I like how you said teen camp. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> clearly, it's like early 30s camp, but... <laughs> Gotta be careful there, Camp Crystal Kush. <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally, if you had told me that, like, without the tick stuff, that this was a setup to a Friday the 13th movie, I would completely believe you. It's pretty straightforward that it, obviously, that's the homage they're going for. And they just wanted some sort of weird mismatch between that and, you know, I don't know, any other insect movies <laughs> that I could think of. Ants. Swarm, maybe. It's just, yeah. wait, them. There you, you go, Steve. Ants? Ants, yes. yes. Ant Z. It's not with a Z. There's a movie oh. called Ants with an S. I you meant the animated <laughs> film starring famed child molester Woody Allen. Jesus. Well, not famed in my circle there, Brandon, but uh, teach well, not, their own. Not yes. famed for the molesting. He was famous for other reasons. That just came Jesus. later. Yeah, 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 Annie Hall. That was over 40 years ago. Get over it, guys. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they build a fire, which is a great idea. Oh, my God, the fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, apparently none of these fucking 36-year-olds know how to make a fire. Yeah, well, they're teens. Right, sorry. None of these 36-year-old, 18-year-olds know how to make a fire. <laughs> It looked like they made a pretty good one to me. Right? They did ju They did just fine. So, I'm mad at the counselors already at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I've been, I used to go to camp every summer. I earned my way to camp because my parents weren't paying for that shit. And uh, the counselors basically have your, every, your, your entire life planned from... Like the moment you wake up until the moment your your face hits that pillow yes. again, so that you're not off doing shit like this. Those right. counselors just want to go in their cabin and bang, which is great. They should go up to their cabin and bang, but not with like <laughs> six inner city youths. But that's the thing; <laughs> they're off doing that, and they're getting up to the, 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 the big throwing the gas on the fire and everything like that. Of course, this inter this is a coitus interruptus for them. <laughs> <laughs> Carlton Cockblocker. Yes, it, but Scolari comes out to rag them out, and I'm sorry, I do not buy Peter Scolari as a tough guy. I don't know. Yeah, no. He's, he is he is a suburban stepdad at best. <laughs> Wait, so you wouldn't <laughs> buy him in like a Goodfellas remake? God, no. Maybe as a corpse. <laughs> Man, who's you? Just a Joe Pesci's first victim. There you go. Yeah. 
And Amy totally greases him out, or Tiffany, or whatever the fuck his daughter's name is, because uh, he, she says, what are you, too busy banging uh, Amy? Is that the other counselor? I think her name is Melissa. Melissa? Sure. Either way, I was like, oh, her, her big burn is that her dad is sexually active. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> Shots fired. Kakakao. <laughs> Shakakan. But but what is also unfortunately happening at this time? Oh, so if we're at the point where I think we're at We are, Brendan, and I want you to describe it in painful detail. Uh well, this is where Carlton's dog Carlton has his dog with him. For some reason. Yeah, I don't know why he brought his dog with this fucking trip. But he brought his well, obviously a pit bull because he's gangster as fuck. Oh right? no, no, or it's like an Australian border collie, isn't it? Yeah, no, nothing intimidating in the slightest. So his dog, having suffered earlier an attack by a, a normal sized tick, um, runs into I guess one of the mutant ticks, and his like belly is just like pulsating. Yep. Which I thought I was shocked that it it didn't just explode. But, no, the you dog... Brandon, you like seeing dogs explode, that's cool. <laughs> no, I really don't, but the dog does uh, pass away. dog explosion. <laughs> the dog does pass <laughs> away, and the way... I'm going to say uh, Carlton went to the Jake Gyllenhaal school of holding dogs. <laughs> yeah. Fucking headlock, man. What the man. fuck was that? <laughs> what I think it is, is that wasn't a puppet. That was the dog. I think the dog kept, like, panting and looking at the camera. So they had to tuck the dog's head back behind his arm <laughs> so that it would look dead. I think you're right. <laughs> but this is where we find out that thugs have feelings too. Oh, this is the you know he put this on his reel, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> man, Brutus man, come on! <laughs> dogs die every day, B. You're gonna be alright. <laughs> right. You tough. Oh, and the best is like right after this scene, he has this monologue, and I'm probably just gonna drop the clip in here, but I'll just say the monologue where he says Brutus, he just... He was scratching, and then he wouldn't move. I said, Brutus, but he didn't know who I was. He didn't know who I was. I said, Brutus, and he wouldn't move. He wouldn't move. Brutus! Well, what are you gonna do? Look, I don't belong here, man! Shit, why Brutus, man, huh? I should have never brought my dog to this fucking nightmare! Damn! See, I figured it'd be me who would get in a drive-by shooting, but my dog and my fucking dog would be okay! <laughs> and... <laughs> And then he got eaten by a freaking shack. <laughs> See, Brendan, I thought you would have appreciated that. The thing is, uh. with that, I was off put with Will Smith swearing and dropping the N word in Bad Boys 2. I think I was more off put by Carlton dropping F bombs in this thing. <laughs> it was Ooh. strange. So upset. Uh, and uh, this is when Rance <laughs> shows up, isn't it? Rance! Rance Howard! Oh, by the savior way. Savior of this B-movie. <laughs> Nathan, we've yeah. done, like, four movies with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, but he's been in four of the movies we've talked about. What other movies has he been in with us? Oh, my God. I'd have to look it up. But there's, like, a good list of, like, there's a good chunk of movies we've done oh, that he's I'm, definitely been in. I am IMDBing while you... T- talk about him <laughs> saying how that his brother is going bald yeah. <laughs> oh he says oh, that about oh the, be- the best part was when he's like uh, like oh yeah we saw this guy blah blah was he about yay hi bol- balding a little old and it's like you mean you <laughs> <laughs> because yes I've seen you but this other guy was strangely similar <laughs> just to get an idea of just as a comparison point of what Ron Howard was doing in 1993, 
I believe 13? he was directing the film Backdraft. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Fun fact: the uh, director of this movie, Tony Randall, was uh, roommates with Rick. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say Tony Stan Randall. Winston of uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park fame. Uh, what was he doing at this time? <laughs> uh, he also did a movie called Grand Theft Auto, which I'm assuming inspired the video game. Uh, not not quite. No. Oh. I think it was okay. a, uh, Eat My Dust was the sequel, uh, or spiritual sequel. Anyway, Wait a second. This is my favorite part about the Wikipedia entry for Grand Theft Auto. Okay. <laughs> the film takes its title from the crime, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> 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 Just in case you weren't sure. Fun fact, the title of the movie, fact, Murder at 1600, fact. is in reference to the crime committed at the address 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. Thanks, IMDb Fun Facts. Uh, so, Tex. Yep, Tex. This is where Peta Scolari and uh, the creator of Robot Chicken decide <laughs> they're going to take a road trip to take the dog into the vet and mm. also look for uh, that kid who used to guest star on Silver Spoons. But, yeah, because he took off. Yes. Like, that's, he's done. That's so they're... part of his soliloquy. He was like, he was getting ready to leave and maybe go to the disco. They're, br- <laughs> they're bringing... <laughs> yes, it worked that time! Oh. <laughs> oh. Congratulations, So good. Michael. I feel so good inside He beat right that now. dead dog into yes. submission. <laughs> yes. Good job, Brandon. <laughs> But they bring they bring the dead dog to the vet, yep. and the, 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 that's when the dog's chest does explode and like the fucking brain tick pops out. Yep. <laughs> and I gotta say, this scene's pretty sol- This scene's pretty great. It is. Where it escapes through the w- always wide open door to vet, and it's just like, oh, oh yeah, you guys probably have to say something about that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no vet has ever closed their door, apparently, in the history of movies. Here's the thing, Izzy. Why would you? <laughs> Izzy, I don't know I don't know if you know anything about animals. I'm not sure you do. But um, you can just leave the doors wide open. Like, they'll be fine. You can. Yeah. You don't. They don't you go anywhere. Right? <laughs> well, the dead ones don't. No. Sometimes dead is better. In Sometimes this case, dead is better. The dog was dead. The tick wasn't. Haha, <laughs> Arthur! <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that time you left your pet at the vet? Beverage Farm remembers. <laughs> Made a sausage out of him. Oh my god! <laughs> it's called a snossage, you monster. <laughs> so the tick is running around the room. Yep. Chasing everyone. <laughs> I think the nurse just like fucking stomps it? Yes. Yeah. When, when in doubt, squish. As one does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carlton is like running through the woods. <laughs> yes, and, and he gets bit by a tick as well. Mm. It climbs up and ruins his zubas. <laughs> he also gets attacked by Hick and not Hick. Yes, <laughs> and has the most unrealistic reaction to being shot. <laughs> oh, it is a total flare flop when he gets shot. <laughs> Yeah. Also, okay, so we should mention this like when you're bitten when you're bitten by these mutated ticks, you hallucinate at first. Well, that's one of the things that can happen because that's what the vet had said that uh the ticks their secretions were uh hallucinogen. I'm assuming because of the THC and the dog was pros- possibly hallucinating when it attacked them. Yeah, uh, so the dog was having an acid trip while it died. Right, and no, it wasn't because of the THC. She says it's because regular ticks have a uh, they have a, a neurotoxin in their bite that makes it go numb, so you don't realize that they're they're sucking your blood, oh, and so, so in go. high enough doses, it might cause hallucinations. Thank Since they're you, on herbal he? steroids, yes. yeah. because that's another thing we find out here—the whole steroids thing. Well, yeah. So, um, oh, just real quick, uh, he was in Lone Ranger. Jonah Hex, uh, <laughs> this movie. Uh, he was also in Universal Soldier, and yeah. uh, which we I believe we did for your guys' show. And there was oh, and everything I learned from movies. And he was in yeah, Chairman of the Board. Yeah, 
Yep. Four movies. Oh, so there you go. Five if you count Universal Soldier. Yeah. Four, yeah, four movies on this show, one movie we've done on your show. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Rance Old Howard. <laughs> so he's barely in this movie, and we've talked about more than people who are in the whole movie. <laughs> he's clearly our Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> Six Degrees of Rance. Uh, sounds like a salad. It does, doesn't it? You get like a side when you get a euro or something. <laughs> mm, okay. Oh, say that one more time. <laughs> what? What's that? What what kind of sandwich? A, a gyro? All right. There we go. Yeah, that's what All I right. said. Sound like you said gyro. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. At least I didn't say gyro. <laughs> it's a gyro. Duh. Gyro. Yeah, can I get that gyro with some rants? <laughs> so ticks. <laughs> so ticks. <laughs> this is the part where Carlton's like, I'm gonna just take some pills I found. I yeah. thought he just ate something out of a bloody Ziploc bag. No, he got no, them no, no. out of the, the yeah. other dude's bag. He was taking steroids to get pumped up yeah. and impress his chick. Oh. Yeah, those blue pills apparently were steroids back in 1993. <laughs> I, I was afraid like, oh, he thought they were steroids and turned out to be an early form of Viagra. And then he was going to sword fight his way out of the situation. <laughs> no, no, no. I think uh, based on what happens later, they were actually roofies. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he was God. going drug that girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, goodness, where are we now? So, Carlton has been shot, and he is super unrealistic screaming. Right. <laughs> and this is also the point where um, Amy, I guess is her name, the daughter, hmm. uh, it, like the, she's basically at the camp, and they're like, eh, go fishing with the Asian girl that doesn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> Who just Which, I, starts talking all of a sudden for no reason, nothing keys her up to do it. That side story was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, so, okay... So, again, this counselor chick, the the one that didn't get banged by Peter Scolari. Right. So, her whole thing's like, yeah, everybody, come on, let's go down and go fishing. And then everybody's like, no, fuck that noise, who cares? I'm just going <laughs> to sunbathe here. And they're like, okay, well, why don't you take the deaf girl down there? I gotta, I don't know, hang out here, because the other guy's at the vet, and... Uh, I suck at my job. <laughs> that, uh, that's basically all I got from that whole scene from her, it was like... I'm just gonna be here too. Maybe I'll catch some sun. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly thought, okay, so when the when the girl when her and the Asian girl go down to start fishing, mm -hmm. um, they did you notice like a lot of furtive glances? I was like, are they setting up a romance? That yeah. would have been great. The only thing <laughs> I really noticed there was we she went from mute to annoyingly never stops talking about fishing in no time flat. And, and she's like, go get my fishing hook in the water, even though there's giant fucking ticks everywhere. They don't know about the giant ticks yet. Either they way. They just know they're bored. Well, supposed, she does. Yeah, either way, she's supposed to be, like, uh, first of all, like, afraid of stuff, PTSD, not talking, to, bitch, go get my fishing hook. <laughs> Because she's afraid of the water. <laughs> she was really matter-of-fact about it. I'm just saying, it's a real switch in character. And guys, I gotta say, so she goes over and gets it, and of course we see that Rance Howard has been killed, and all I gotta say in my Mr. Garrison voice is, ALL THE HOWARDS ARE DEAD?! <laughs> Wait, Clint hasn't died just yet. Uh, yet. well, I'm, sh I'm sorry, at this point I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was weird that they they bothered to like they did it off screen. Like if you really wanted to make the the hillbilly and the austere uh, weed farmer appear truly evil, wouldn't you have them kill the cop on camera? It certainly would have padded the film out maybe to ninety minutes because this is only eighty three minutes long. <laughs> it's a it's a marathon. Yeah, <laughs> but you gotta. But then they would have to pay for squibs. Ain't nobody got budget for that. Especially had... in this movie, so that's fair. I mean, I feel like maybe there was a death right around the time this movie was made involving squibs. Ooh. They had squibs on Carlton. Oh, Carolco pictures. <laughs> wait, did it, wait, what happened? Maybe, maybe that electrocution of that one lady on the set of Pet Cemetery oh my 2. Oh god, this is the sec time, second time we've mentioned <laughs> Carlco in, in so few weeks. <laughs> wait wait a second, guys. Fill me in. What's going on? We're talking about the, the crow tragedy. <laughs> We're talking about the crow in Pet Cemetery. You guys, you guys didn't like the film, or no? That the what? fact that 
Carlton had squibs, the squibs death. on. They, they didn't have God, the squib on. Up. They wanted. They didn't want to kill Rance Howard, possibly. Mm. So the crow, <laughs> something went wrong? Christ. <laughs> Yes, in Crow 4, Wicked Prayer, Eddie Furlong is the new crow. David Boreanaz and Tara Reid are in there for some reason. Oh, I think, is that the one with Kirsten Dunst, too? No, that's number, that three. number three. Nathan, when are number we doing three, Crow yeah. 4? Anytime you want. Well, actually, uh, at the next time, it's my pick for a small screen shameful. Okay. So. A Crowber. A Crowber. <laughs> I would be on every episode of that, too. I'm just... <laughs> Okay, so ticks. You guys are absolutely my spirit animal sometimes, and then sometimes you're just <laughs> wrong, wrong individuals. Wait, when are we wrong? Rats. So never. So ticks. Ticks. <laughs> What's next, Nathan? Uh, where are we at? Oh, he took some pills that he found. The sheriff's murdered off screen, and uh, oh, <laughs> I have a, a thing here where I feel that the uh, the hillbilly sidekick for Sir r- reminded me of a cross between a hillbilly version of Indiana Jones and Murdoch from the A Team. Why does he have that finger thumb glove? He had he had a glove that only covered his his finger and his thumb. I think you know why. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Steve knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's called the hitchhiker. What you do is you stick your okay. So I, I believe this is this is where things really start to unravel in the movie. Well, uh, just now, just now, just uh, at this point, just at this one moment. Because up to up to this moment, it's been solid, flawless. solid, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. You know what? I ran past the like the best line in the entire movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, before Carlton gets killed, there's a scene where the bimbo is accosted by Ron Howard in his yeah. up because he is he, dying. I, do you mean Clint and Howard? Get, you mean Clint Howard? Clint Howard. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Freud was right. Um, so, at one point... Clint Howard is like right in her face and he screams, I'm in <laughs> Yeah. And he's got the gun in his hand. He's like, Shoot me! Shoot me! I'm in fist! It's like my favorite part of the movie. And then Absolutely. the greatest final tragedy is that he goes to shoot himself and it just clicks. Yeah. <laughs> he can't even do that right. Oh, poor Clint Howard. <gasps> but in the process, she is also bitten by ticks, so she's getting the hallucinations as well. Yeah. So now we can that jump. Means she's ahead. also infested. She yes. So now uh, everybody's starting to get back to the cabin at this point, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're you know trying to get all this stuff sorted and stuff. Um, the Hicks show up. The Hicks show up. Uh, they don't want them to let Carlton in because Carlton's still alive. And Carlton's fucked up. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. Because yeah. <laughs> he did that flare flop when he died. Wait a second. Yeah? Aside from Rance Howard, out of all the kids, mm-hmm. is he the only person that dies? Uh, Carlton dies. And That's what I mean. And doesn't the... The Hispanic kid dies. The Hispanic no. kid. We're just not there yet. No, he makes it. They all they all make it except for Carlton. No, oh, no. no, no, no. Yeah, uh, Seth Green went back and got him. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, oh, this is the that ultimate. Means that the blonde chick is infested. She goes back to the city infested. But this is the ultimate. Like only the black guy died in the horror movie. <laughs> and and Clint Howard and the Hillbillies I, and, the, and the Howard boys. I mean, out and... of the people we care about, <laughs> right? Out of the 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 hero. How dare group, you? The sheriff of the town is dead, and you say meh. Rance Howard is a zombie, and we all know that. That's true. So anyway, <laughs> Carlton, so, yeah, yeah, Carlton comes in, and he's basically he's basically on death's door. Yes. And the Hicks are like, "Get him fuck out of here! We don't want him in here." And somehow, even though there's only two of them with a limited amount of shots in the shotgun, or actually, I think there was a revolver at one point. Yeah, it was a revolver yeah. at that point. Yeah. They somehow take over the situation. Um, yeah. 
despite the fact that he has a firearm, he still sends his man, uh, Sir, that is, sends his man, uh, I believe his name was Jerry. Madam. Jerry. <laughs> That's the sure. only name I noted. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, panic, so I can make those panic at the disco jokes. Of course, right. Worth so it. Jerry, uh, he's made to go get the van, and he s- starts fucking hallucinating, <laughs> <laughs> and he sees Zombie Rance Howard. <laughs> right, tied it back in to you saying that Rance Howard is a zombie, and he's like, "Wah!" Just drives off and fucking dies. Now, when when they shot. Uh, the the kid from the Michael Jackson video earlier with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. Was it done like scatter shot? Did anybody take notice? I think they just hit him in like the the hip or something. I don't know. Right, but was it like multiple shots like hit to his stomach? Like it was a scatter shot round that they fired because when Sir starts shooting his shotgun at Jerry, um, he's they're single bullet holes which yeah unless you're firing a slug out of a shotgun that's the only way that would be made but i thought when they killed carlton or the kid who used to be on silver spoons they <laughs> there was a scatter shot to his stomach let's break a, this uh, again down. squibs you can't put like 15 squibs in a windshield with every shot you just can only do one right okay. we have one car <laughs> and we need to make it work. <laughs> Good old one take Tony Randall, they used to call him. So, this kills our bad. I right? fucked Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Nathan? This kills our bad guys, right? Oh, yeah, they're dead. Well, uh, Hick's dead. The, the, the Sir is not dead yet. No. Because okay. he's in the room, he's laying down. And then I think the greatest special effect in this movie, like, I'm being genuine, is. Carl Tick! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> Carlton, or that kid from... Or the guy who hosts America's Funniest Home Videos, he starts turning into a human tick mutant hybrid. Mm-hmm. He's turning into the fucking spider at the end of it! Spoiler oh, alert! Shit. Spoiler And... Only oh, the Tim Curry one. And let me tell you, Scott Evil is freaking out. Yes, he is. He is having an absolute conniption fit. As as I would too, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> they man- they managed to make it out and Devin Sawa's best friend from Idle Hands, uh I don't know his name. <laughs> 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 they uh they I, I what happens? I don't forget how they actually blow it up. Well no bef- okay, so oh. first of all, they find out that the secret to life is the power of curling. Because they get a yeah. broom and they sweep and they sweep and they hurry hard, I, hurry, hurry hard, hurry, hurry, and they sweep. Yeah. All I have written down. Away. This is why this was suggested by Brendan. <laughs> fucking curling. <laughs> this is actually suggested by Nathan. Spoiler alert! It's mine. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. So they 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 do all that and. Uh, uh, they realize, of course, that they can kill the ticks with apparently them just being in proximity to fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not necessarily on fire, but just near fire. Because if they're near fire, they'll like, explode. Of course. Um, so they're, they're... A- apparently that uh, black ooze stuff that was coming out was nitroglycerin. Yes, because that's... <laughs> they're just made of C4. <laughs> that's what... That, they're, I believe, what they're... sends it all up. They're Michael Bay ticks. Yeah. <laughs> Just but unnecessarily exploding. At- Did anyone else notice that Megatics, uh, Megatic looks like they just took a Graboid puppet and sort of trimmed it down? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very fair observation. This movie had a budget of a million dollars. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So, Seth Green... Wait, wait, what Tremors were they on in 1993? Was that uh, oh, two? Oh, Steve, I can answer you that. I believe the Tremors they were on was the first one. I thought that was 1990, though. And then number two, I think, was 92. Number three might have been 95-ish. I, I stopped counting watching Tremors after, I think, the, the third one. Wait, so you haven't oh. seen Tremors Bloodlines or Trevor <gasps> Tremors A Cold Day in Hell? Or, Nor have uh, I seen a single to Tremors, Africa, Tremors a 4 show. Back to Perfection nope. or something? I don't uh, know. Tremors 4 uh, Origins. Or, 
Because it's the one where they go back they go in back, time. They go back in time. <laughs> to 1885. Sweet Jesus in the manger. Back to the few tremors. <laughs> you guys. I know. I know what you're thinking, and it's even better than you think. I actually <laughs> noted that the the part where we the, where panic becomes the tick. I have ah, it's the exorcism of Carlton Banks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's <Edward> Pantic. <laughs> So, he emerges as a giant blue superhero with an IQ in the 40s. <laughs> they, they, they figure out uh, that they can blow this stuff up real good. And Seth Green, who has all of a sudden overcome his mental disorder, as he puts it, or mental disease, climbs the cabin, says, hey, light that broom on fire and just toss it to me. <laughs> just toss it. And she wait, 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 wait. It's like four just, feet away, right? Yeah, and she just tosses it like hell of an arm on her. I gotta say. Wait, 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 wait. Seth Green. Um, you mean the guy from Rat Race? Yes, that's him. Oh, oh, oh. The guy oh okay, from Break okay. the Bunny. The dude who was in uh, up uh, without uh, without a paddle. Oh, Matt that guy. Miller. Yeah. Oh, Dax Shepard got you. Exactly. No. Oh no, no, the other one. Burt Reynolds. Matthew Lillard. <laughs> no, I said with Matthew Lillard. It can't be Matthew Lillard with Matthew oh. Lillard. Although that would be delightful. That that would sounds like a great movie. This is a fantastic that. movie. Ooh, du- oh, oh, double impact remake. <laughs> Matthew, Sorry, Lillard? Matthew Lillard. Okay, so um, there are no uh, lav mics on the actors' shirts because we will break them. The boom guy's got to stand about five hundred feet back. Yep. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway, <laughs> we're going to get to the ending of Ticks. Yes. They, they, the only they, thing that can stop them is a sharp stick. They <laughs> blew up the propane tank, which explodes all of everything at uh, uh, Camp Crystal Cush, as uh, old Kitten Post put it earlier. <laughs> the setup is that they get back to the city and everybody's kind of safe, but then, then there's a possible sequel. Because there's still dick eggs. Mm. Nathan, I've got some bad news. <laughs> Don't say it. I know what you're going to say. No sequel credits. <laughs> yep. Takes two electric boogaloo. Oh, my favorite. Oh. By the way, in the credits, it says, Based on an idea by Doug yeah. Beswick. Yes. And I'm like, Whoa, wait a second. Was he just like, Hey guys, I got it. Killer ticks. Cool. Give me credit. Here, give me a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's how many of those things go. Great I'm idea. waiting for the first movie that ends with, Based on an idea spouted on a stupid podcast called Everything I Learned from Movies. <laughs> and be like, Yes, victory. We're going to we're, we're gonna have to sue him. That's the only way you can get that title. Hobbs and Shaw, I'm looking at you. I guess uh, I guess Doug will give you a credit for that well thought out idea. Thanks for fleshing that out for us. <laughs> what a totally Canadian movie this must be. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's Ticks. That's our horror movie uh, to end October and to celebrate the legalization of cannabis in Canada and Halloween. <laughs> But but three, two of the three girls have been bitten by the ticks. They're infested. Be They're fine. gonna boil in rage. And... Ooh, the sequel, Tick Follows. <laughs> it's a sexually transmitted it. Lyme <laughs> disease. Yes, we are constantly on the run from giant Carlton Tick thing. Carl Tick is his name, sir. Carl, Carl Tick. Tick. I like it. Sold. Yep. Uh, so, as our guest, Stephen Izzy, uh, would you recommend Ticks? Oh, yeah. Eh, sure, why not? <laughs> oh. As, as a podcast that's recommended such other incredible movies as Dogs and Night of the Lepus. <laughs> Night uh, of a Thousand Cats! <laughs> yeah, Night of a Thousand Cats. Or House of a Thousand House Cat thousand Corpses, cats. or whatever it's called. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, why not? Check out Ticks. Okay, uh. Now streaming on Voodoo! <laughs> Nathan? Uh, absolutely i had a great time watching it because the first time i watched it um I, my immediate thought was man it sucks that we don't do direct to video uh movies wait brendan can we do direct to video movies if we have a fifth thursday in every was month this, was this the impetus this was this served as the impetus for this idea Dang! <laughs> That's how much I enjoyed watching this movie and wanting to tear it apart. 
Oh yeah, this is a big, <laughs> stupid, dumb, hilarious, dumb, stupid movie. If, uh, you, if you got yourself a Crow T robot and a Tom Servo in your group of friends, get together and watch this movie. If you want to watch Gangster Carlton, and that's not even the tip of the iceberg, then you gotta watch Ticks. Right. But now, we're gonna take a brief break, and we'll be right back. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. What Were They Thinking? And we're back! Hey, we are back! Oh my god, Izzy, were those pretty good ads? Oh my god, it was almost like they were the greatest ads that ever added... In the history of adding. Ah! Uh, hey, Nathan. Um, yes, Brendan. Uh, and Steve and Izzy. Yes. Hello, gentlemen. Yes, gentlemen. Ah, uh, Gauss is here as well. <laughs> <laughs> Always offers such a, an insightful look into the movie. I feel like his uh, opinions are mostly the same. Well, I mean, he does really only watch movies for things that he could possibly eat. This is true. But it is now time for the low haiku. Yes, the low haiku. 17 perfect syllables to represent the movie we just spent, oh, the better part of an hour talking about. Indubitably. Mm. Big word, big word. Thank you. Excellent. I see your word of the day calendar is really paying off. I looked ahead a little bit. I'm not gonna oh, lie. that's what you know. It's you're, it's it's you're bettering yourself, so we can forgive it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, as our guest, Stephen Izzy, would you like to read your haikus? I'm sorry to disappoint you, gentlemen. I don't. Currently have a haiku. That's 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 fine. I've got one though. Can, and, but yeah. as 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 a good uh, uh, guest on a Canadian show, you apologized. So, but but I would that's like so to hear sorry. Izzy sing so one sorry. of her signature songs. You got a signature song you'd like to sing, babe? <laughs> I already sang it. Uh, I I want to hear the fun fact song again. Oh, you mean something like it's a fun fact? Cause it's a super fun fact? Cause they're fun fun facts. <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Bring it, bring it down there, Brendan. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I mean, I s- s- squee. She, she said sorry. it. Just, just, just a second, just a second, just a second. Steve, would you like to read a haiku? I do have a haiku. <clears throat> Tick, starring Seth Green. Also, Gangster Carlton. Fire cleanses all. Very good. Oh, your clapping is immaculate. <laughs> Nathan, would you like to go or would you like to go last? Yes, I, I do have one. Okay. 90s B movie. Come on, Pot doesn't do that. Carlton F bombs. <clears throat> All right, and I've got one here for the road. Weed steroid ticks. Carlton intimidating. Not theatrical? Very good. Very good. Excellent. Oh, I, I dropped my phone. I was so excited. Oh, dear. That is way too much excitement for NBR. I, it's okay. I have an Otterbox. It's, uh, 
It's a good time to uh, mention this right now. We are brought to you by Dave's Cracker Jack Snacks. Yes, Dave's Cracker Jack Snacks. When you really want the blandest of treats. Mm-mm. When you, when you shake your head and slightly smile, you know you're eating at Dave's. The prize at the bottom is always a two-for-one for the sizzler. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Crackers. I hear you get free refills. Yes. God, we are taken over by hallucinatory ticks. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm like, we're, but we're, we're, we're back, bro. We're back, bro. And yeah. let me tell you something. Um, I thought, I thought, you know, I figured one day I'd get hit in a drive-by, but not bit by hallucinatory ticks. Well, it's actually more probable to be bit by a hallucinatory tick than killed in a drive-by, especially in Fredericton. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nathan? Yes, Brendan? We talked about this movie, Ticks. Boy, howdy, did we? All of us together as a collective. As, as friends, as a family, almost. But what do we always say? Well, uh, collectively, we always say... Don't take a word for us! <laughs> well, let's take a look at the Rotten Tomatoes page for Ticks. Um, actually, Steven, is he, are you on the page yet? Because I actually I'm want to ask you this trying question. Trying to pull it up. Right Don't pull it up yet. Oh, okay. I want to ask you, what do you think it has for a critic's rating? Oh, negative four. Ooh, yeah, no, the critics aren't going to like this one. I'm going to go with 15. Wait, 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 no, N.A. Okay. You, nobody saw it because you ready for this? it's ticks. 15. You ready for this? Yes. 67. What? No. <gasps> that means the only people who watched it liked it. 67% <laughs> of critics... Two out of three critics. All That's exactly six how of them, actually. <laughs> Wait, can I tell you something that'll blow your mind even more? The audience rating, 32. That makes more sense. <laughs> I, I'm surprised the audience rating is lower, honestly. I really am as well. Um, but I only have one real critics review here that I want that I'm going to read uh, from Ken Hank Hanky of Mountain Express. He just says, "So inane that it's entertaining." You know, he at least uh, used a big word and he tried, so I'll give him four out of five stars. Okay. This picture's horrible. Come on, Ken. Fix your hair, Ken. Like Don't so listen cool. to them, Ken. You're doing the Lord's work. Scott Weinberg from e Critic, eFilmCriticRather.com says, Well-presented, low-budget B-movie silliness. See, this guy gets it. This 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 guy knows exactly. He he wasn't asking for Casablanca from Tix. <laughs> Give this guy five out of five stars. He did. He's doing good work. Um, I I do you want to just this dive into the, the last ones? critic review? That's an actual okay. review. <laughs> oh, that's it. That yeah, was the there's one. There's only one more. The, the other the other ones give ratings, but they gave no review. So I think Izzy's uh, tone is going to change here once you get into the audience reviews. Well, the thing, here's the thing with it. Before we move on to the, the doldrums, the snake pit, if you will, mm. um, they're the only ones who put you know words to paper about this. The other t- three, two which are negative, and the other is a fresh. Uh-oh. I don't, they're calling me right now. <laughs> is that Rotten Tomatoes? Yep. Oh. Oh, the one who rated it fresh should use too many expletives. Oh, you guys couldn't publish that. Oh, oh, same for the negative guys? Johnny Rotten? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. No. No, he called you Johnny Rotten. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't take that either. You should definitely send some sort of legal uh, tort uh, his way. Uh, Sorry, so Axel Rotten. Sue him. Okay. Oh, now he's calling you Axel Rotten. So, hey, it's not Ian. So, I mean, there's that. Nathan, is it one of your tomatoes okay. on the phone? All right, I, I'll, I'll tell him. All right, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. Uh, he he was in pr- he he was upset about the whole Johnny Rotten thing, but mm. you brought him back around with Axel Rotten. I thought you were just getting a phone call from one of your tomatoes. Nope, nope. Uh, gave those up almost 15 years ago now. I remember when I had a rotten Axel once. <laughs> <laughs> So the audience reviews. Let's head in. Let's yes. Let's head into the the dire 
fucking pit that is the audience reviews. Mark B gives it one and a half stars, and he says, strange, funny, crazy, buggy, trashy, tongue emoji. (laughs) He Hmm. loves the taste of trash. Hmm. Anybody who puts emojis in their review is, uh, yeah, not getting a good review for me. I'm going to, I'm going to give him like two out of five stars. I mean, at least you wrote something down, but come on, emojis, grow up. You're not a 15-year-old girl. Unless you are. In which case, try and act like an adult on the internet. <laughs> so Need Mark, to anything? Yeah, I do. Uh, okay. But I'm just positing the idea that Mark B. self-identifies as a 15-year-old girl. Hey, you um, never know. Uh, well, Jesse V., which I can only assume means Jesse Ventura, uh, <laughs> wrote, I had a feeling I seen this, so I borrowed... Uh, through the burrows, rather, through the reviews. Alfonso Ribeiro, holy shit, gorilla. I have seen this. Ah, good times. Fantastically bad, but still good times. Two stars. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think the body there uh, didn't know how to hit the stars right, so. <laughs> Wait, you mean star of Abraxas, guardian of the universe, Jesse the Body Ventura? <laughs> yes. Yeah, is he in anything else? I don't think so. Predator. Running Man. Yeah. Predator. No, I believe he's only yeah. in Abraxas Guardian of the Universe, and you know that. Well, uh, he's only the lead in it. <laughs> no, he's definitely in Running Man, because I'm pretty sure that's the movie with the most governors per capita. <laughs> I don't know. I think he just did Abraxas. He was in that TV movie that was a backdoor pilot for a wrestler's whoa, turn whoa, whoa. We don't want to hear about his backdoor. Whoa. I, he has got an impressive tuchus. I'm not don't, gonna lie. Good old Jesse, the backdoor pilot mentor. Right? Nathan, <laughs> don't spoil the movie Stephen Izzy are gonna do on their porn month. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, um, you might find me read one of these uh, comments because I really liked one of them. Go right okay, ahead. go ahead. Uh, Ted B gave it four out of five stars, <laughs> that was... and he said, "See my comment for slugs." <gasps> I wrote that down too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to go Thanks, back Ted. through your old oh, reviews, Ted, Ted B. Yourself. So, so wait, wait, wait. You if are I'm not Gene the way Siskel, this podcast sir. Works, if I understand the way this this podcast works, we're going to have to watch Slugs so we can go back and see Ted B's other comments. <laughs> and why he gave it four out of five stars. <laughs> Apparently, he was also a fan of Slugs. I think he may also be a, a fan of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Let me pull up Slugs real quick. Ted B says... Tix was a great movie. <laughs> you have to follow the Ted B cinematic universe. You can't you know just start at yes, Tix. I'm pulling up right now. Ted B says, check out my review for Abraxas. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, no, it's a rabbit hole. Steve, don't do it. It's a trap. I would like it if every one of his comments is, go see my comment about this, but it's a never-ending circle. Like, all of them, like, <gasps> Slug says, like, go see my review of Bats. Bats says, go see my review of Dogs. Says, go see my review of Ticks. You <laughs> gave me a circle. great idea to do exactly that. The first movie <laughs> he ever references, when you go, it, it constantly changes. So it takes you back to the start. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a circle that's never unbroken. Yeah. They all are referring to each other. His entire his entire life is to troll the internet. But that you think about the amount of dedication that would have he'd have to put in to do that though, because he'd have to yeah. constantly be changing that uh, that first reference movie if he wanted to keep re- re- you know reviewing movies. Or you just you just keep uh, you you just constantly keep updating it, and hopefully nobody ever gets to the end of your trail. Well, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, Curtis J gives it four stars, and he says, "Totally remember this growing up. Love this movie. Made me hate Tex." <laughs> so I guess before that he was a fan. Yeah, right. Before then, I was like, "Yeah, Tex are misunderstood." Guys, we have an update. I believe Steve, you found the review for Slugs. Yes, I found Ted B's review for Slugs to get further input. Okay, see uh, my comment for Hocus Pocus. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Ted B, four out of five stars. Any movie like this is a must-see. Ants, spiders, ticks, slugs, worms, all awesome. So his review for Squirm says, see my review for slugs? 
Ted B, we are pulling up your entire history. If you're I, listening out there, please no, call in. No, I am just kidding because Squirm is a movie about worms. Ooh, it looks like his last update was three years ago when he reviewed Who Can Kill a Child? See my review. What the fuck stuff. is that? <laughs> Apparently, it looks like it's a perhaps a Spanish movie because it is also listed as Quien Puedo Mata a Un Nio. Okay, so anyway. 79% audience score, though. All right, um, Nathan, give us another review here. Oh, I was going to say stars. it's an informative video posted by John Berin that Benet's parents. <laughs> Ch- oh, fuck it. I don't have anything to top that. <laughs> no, uh, Cha T. C H A T, so either chat or chatty. Chatty! Writes, see Clint Howard get a bug up his arse. Two stars. <laughs> I thought you were going to say see Clint Howard for comments. <laughs> <laughs> Howard for comments. <sighs> Clint Howard, what, what do you think about. How did you review ticks, Mr. Howard? I could have been a backdraft! <laughs> Is he your, your review of that review? Oh, see my review for Ted B. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we should hint for next week. So next week, we are out of Schlocktober. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are going to talk about a film, and I'm going to give you a hintski for what we're about to do. A hintaroo. A hintaroonie. Okay. A little interesting tidbit, because the tidbit that's interesting that might lead us to guessing of the movie? No, it's a hint, dummy. Ouch, Fun just fact. hurtful. Steve, I love you. I know. Physically. I, I've seen the dick pics, I'm aware. Okay, alright. Wait, you you did see them? I thought you need to use a microscope. <laughs> I mean, I have a special server for them. You know what? Neither so the hint-ski? there. Right, right. So anyway, uh, I always send Mariah's dick pics as my own. <laughs> so people think I have a huge schlong with you Mariah. standing next to them for a frame of reference. Yep. So it's, just ch- it's just cheaper than buying a macro lens. <laughs> so here's your hint, and it's going to be fairly obvious, I think. But maybe it won't be obvious which one of these it is. So here we go. <clears throat> Steven Izzy, you have a podcast, I think. Do we? Oh, yeah, we do, babe. Yeah, it's for Shit. Screening Country. As... That's been recorded? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do have a podcast called For Screen and Country. Where wait me and Izzy go through the BFI top Hold on movie. a second wait, 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 wait. I ain't watching that crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every movie is a scant two and a half to five hours long. That is not we... true. There are plenty of 90-minute movies on that list. <laughs> anyway, go on. Uh, yeah, you can find us at uh, FSACcast. All right, uh, guys. That's not even the no. website. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not? Shit. All right. Uh, but yeah, we have a podcast called Everything I Learned from Movies at eilfm.podbean.com. Uh, we also talk about bad to questionable movies, and occasionally we have guests like, uh, uh, what's his name? Brendan from What Were They Thinking? Um, and also, Nathan uh, won't get off his fat butt and come over. I wasn't going to say that, but <laughs> Oy, <laughs> it's Gerald, what? <laughs> no, have you ever been on our podcast? Yeah, the Showgirls two one, and yeah, Steel. As, as like the unit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I as, okay. as old right, Nathan the on. unit. They Whoa, used to call him just a goddamn <laughs> second. You. <laughs> Filthy Americans. You've never ever asked me once to appear as just myself on your show. We have always told you you are always welcome. And I... Do we have to personally invite you, each individual person? I have volunteered for two uh, apparent October-themed months as well. Did he? Yes. Yeah, the... Uh, Steve, uh, uh, are you uh, just uh, we just talked about. And, and, and the one about Ernest as well. You will come on any movie we do starring Ernest. <laughs> all I need is advance notice. That's all I need. He needs three years advance notice. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough to clear out Jim Varney's browser history before he died from autoerotic asphyxiation. But yes, no, uh, everything I learned from movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bad to questionable movies. We also have interviews uh, about once a month, which is fucking awesome. Um, still waiting on that Jim Varney one. But 
Maybe about, we can uh, get little Janet Varney instead. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Janet Varney, great comedian. You can get her. Um, yeah, where was I? Yeah, check us out at E-I-L-F, <laughs> E-I-L-F Movies. That's everything I learned from movies on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll plug. And also follow them on Twitter at HVH Podcast with two Ds. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase, oddcast, spelled correctly with two Ds. Uh, <laughs> where, you, where you also have the uh, fun facts about uh, the movie Steel, starring yeah. Shaquille O'Neal and Annabeth Gish. There's hey. one fact. Wow. Yeah, because someone needs to get on that shit. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, is he? I mean, we're talking about the incredible movie where Shaq and Annabeth Gish finger each other like eight times yeah yeah and old shaft likes to rub the shaft yeah, richard roundtree talks about how much he loves the shaft so anyway you can find our podcast on social media <laughs> facebook just search for what were they thinking you can also find us on twitter and instagram at wwtt podcast where we are of course on all the podcatchers like podbean spotify apple podcast stitcher all that good stuff you can also find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. You can also find some stuff on Redbubble and T Public. Uh, so that is it. Wait, wait, wait. Don't forget about Four Screen and Country, where you Why and Jason you? talk about movies I gotta get the, the door. BFI just Top 1 to oh, okay. and occasionally second. we come on to I, guys, talk about Dr. Zhivago. I gotta get the, get the door. Give me a second. No. You okay. filthy bastards. <gasps> Oh no! You, you thought you could lock me out. I am on this show every damned week, and you will listen to my promo right now. Nathan, why did you lock him out? I didn't. I didn't do it. And if I didn't do it, and you didn't do it... It was me, Lotion Borsty. Montrose, that's who you, you need to... I reg- Regardless, they are your employees, and you shall rein them in. I am Montrose Monkington the oh Third boy. Esquire, from Bananashire upon Hampton, in the great country of England, and not accustomed to being treated as such. Go on. If you wish to get back into my good graces... You will check out my YouTube channel, Montrose Monkington TV. Then you will go to Facebook and like Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and friends. Then you will go over to Twitter and you will follow at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R D. And then, maybe then, good sirs, you will be back in my good graces. Thank you. More later. Wait, you know, uh, Montrose, before you go, uh, Steve, do you want to be on our podcast? I don't, would, don't let Nathan know, but I, we're, I we're won't. actually looking to do another uh, April or uh, January of the Apes, and we're wondering <laughs> if you might want to. I, I would love to be on your podcast, Steve. All right, but, but just remember, don't tell Nathan. I won't. I, mum's the word. Yeah, he's banned now. Good. Steve, you don't, still have, you don't still have monkeys on your show, do you? <laughs> Not, I mean... Not since we left uh, Montrose Jr. in That's the middle of the Nevada lie. desert. He's been taking up residence right above the fireplace. Oh shit, there he is! <laughs> my cousin, what did you... He was a nice chap. Not like that bastard Hello, father. hello, it's me, Jason. <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. Did you see me in Orbs and Shaw? <laughs> oh, you you were delightful. It was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> Let's 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 go get a pint and we'll 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 catch up. You can tell me all about your your escapades this past summer. All right, first round's on you, mate. Hey, sounds Steve, good. Steve, the monkeys have been drinking my beer. <laughs> no, babe, our beer. We're married now. <laughs> Brendan, just let those two filthy Eastern Europeans of questionable origin know that I will be on the lookout for them. Thank you. More later. Nathan, you can come out of the out of the out from under that table now. He just started throwing poop and banana peels. I was terrified. Uh, you, I've never seen you dive that quickly. He was he was incensed. Like he, I, w- mm. I we we have to have a talk with Milos and Borsti. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did somebody say incest? No, we because did not. Because in Cattober, we had several yeah. episodes at night. Calm down there, Utah. <laughs> Fucking plug machine. <laughs> Yes, we'll we'll have to speak with Milos and Borsti because I I don't know what happened there. I know better than to to upset a British monkey. On that note, speaking of British monkeys, Nathan. Yes, Brendan. Uh, 
Uh, well, first of all, Greystoke, Lord, <laughs> the story of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. Oh my Woo! God! First of all, thank you, Stephen Izzy, for joining us once again oh. for the. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm just gonna f- uh, field out a guess here. Twenty seventh guest appearance. Yeah, it was definitely in the low dozens. There you go. <laughs> dozens uh, and dozens. No, thank you guys for real for joining us. Oh yeah, thanks Great for Great to have us. you again. And and just so everybody's clear. You guys are in welcome to join our podcast at any time. That goes for Brendan, Montrose, Mariah, uh, Jerica, um, so Milos and Borsti. Milos, Borsti, Takashi, Yoshiro, whatever the other guys are. Um, the guy that does the theme music. What about Mother Superior? Mother Superior, eh, she's cool. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> You should answer her, Steve. She will strike you. <laughs> Mother Superior, what, what, what are you doing here? I th- did you, did you, I'm just okay. You get back here. <laughs> Careful, he likes that. <laughs> That's gameitall.com. Oh, wait. What's going on? <laughs> ProWrestlingNewsWorld.com. Uh, okay, wrestling no. Nope. World, whatever. Is that a thing? <laughs> Not as far as I'm concerned. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? Fuck worldwrestlingnews.org and fuck Podcoin. <laughs> well, that wasn't the website, but you're close. So anyway, I just want to sorry, ask you... Sorry, sorry, whatever I said. I don't know. So Nathan, I've got questions for you. I've got questions for our guest, but I'll handle those off air. You have questions, you say? Yeah, I have questions. WWTT oh, oh, oh. at podcoin.com. Oh. <laughs> so in a, movie, in a movie... Oh my yes, god. What were they I thinking? Murder both different. of you. <laughs> Nathan. Yes, Brendan. In a movie... Mm-hmm. Where you have the two top tier Howards. Yes. Uh, both dying on screen. Well, one dying on screen, one dying off screen, but they both die. Right. And in a movie where I guess there's toxic waste in the weed that turns ticks into giant ticks. Right. And in a movie where uh, Scott Evil and Carlton are t- teaming up with or going to camp that is being looked over by the other bosom buddy and camp, camp crystal kush i mean that's one that's the that's an entire thought mm-hmm. <laughs> and in a movie where i don't know there's a line about uh drive-bys and dogs dying right i just got to ask you what were they thinking? Hi, I'm Jay Bats. And I'm Michael. And we're the hosts of a very thought-provoking show called The What If Podcast. On it, we'll explore the big and little what-ifs of life and steer our listeners toward a better understanding of the real or hypothetical situations we might find ourselves in. Or not. On our journey, we'll learn interesting facts and fictions about the everyday world. And sometimes, most of the times, we'll dive headlong into rabbit holes that slide up against the subject and sharply turn away from it. Come along with us. We'll have fun and learn something new together. New episodes release every other Tuesday. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Music, and anywhere fine podcasts are archived. Oh now it's time to check out Proof Baby. <laughs> We love the movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Everything I learned from movies. Oh. <laughs> At the ILFM at podbean.com.